All right, Shalom Rastafari. Um, we're beginning the, today would be according to the shadow. And when I say the shadows from the Western, the Western Gentile, we already touched on the doubling, right? The doubling. This is a very interesting um, African American um, uh, crucifixion painting. I got to see it while searching out some images right here. Very interesting. This is, we can say, the reason for the season. Right, and the real overstanding for us as once lost but now found beta Israel, as well as the salvation of the world. Now, let us touch on this right here, okay, because this today, right, in the Western Gentile calculation of time, this would be the first uh, day of the unleavened, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So let's bring up... Um, Unleavened bread right here. Let's check out what images are of unleavened bread. Now, unleavened bread means that there's no yeast. Now, as you study um, Pesach, Passover, and as uh, also accompanying with his Easter, that looks like some um, Basha or Injera right there, right? Um, unleavened bread recipe, Feast of Unleavened Bread. And now we have over here, we have uh, the matzah, right? We have over here the matzah. Now, this is, there's a beautiful teaching and study um, on the symbolism of the bread, the broken bread, and the broken flesh of the Moshia, right? The broken flesh of the, Mo of the Moshia. Right, and also the brokenness of the black man. Now, we still have this image right here, but as you can really see right here, this would be this zoom in. When we look at the broken bread, right, and this might be a little hard for ones, uh, so if, if so, then just, you know, maybe cut it off and look at it later. Um, if you look at this right here, the broken bread and the broken flesh. Because this is the first of the seven days of the unleavened bread. Let's take a look at this right here. And then we can compare this, right, the light of Zion. Very interesting. The light of Zion and here will put this in comparison. Now, if we want to really understand the meaning of the crucifixion, Right, the spiritual meaning of the crucifixion. So here we have the broken bread. Even when we look at the color of the bread, right, when we talk about the color of the cross, the color of the bread. So you see this comparison right here. Now, of course, we should touch on some scripture, right, some scripture to get it into context. And like we said, it's not a, so much about rites or rituals, but it would be important if one prepares and understands um, which bread, why unleavened, and let's uh, let's bring this up right here, right? This comparison right here is interesting. So over these, from the old covenant, from the shadow, over these seven days, this sort of bread would be eaten. Now it said that this particular bread was 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 unleavened because of the haste that the Israelites made in leaving um, out of Egypt, right? And leaving out of Egypt. Now, Jeremiah 23. When you read and study the the holy days in Leviticus chapter 23, make a comparison, especially for this Pesach, Fasica, or Passover. We're in the shadow state of the Western Gentile state. Our Passover in the East is um, would be around the, between the 21st to the 28th, the 20th to, to the 28th, roughly, of April for this particular cycle. But this is for the West, the Western Gentile. In other words, we are in the West right now, and, and the West right now is what's known as Passover and the seven days of unleavened bread. So no doubt you you're aware of that. Um, because you might see the other Jews or the Jews who call themselves Jews, they're practicing and they are um, celebrating 
our ancient holy day that they and their ancestors, the Ashkas and others who converted to our way of life, have kept. Now, it's interesting because we have, our people have gone away from the way and others have come into our, our blessing and the blessing of God through, through their own will. And we willingly have gone astray. So it's very important for us to learn these things and know these things. So this would be the leavened bread. Now, if you didn't prepare for the, for the, the, the shadow or the, the, the lunar, the Gentile, the Western that we're in the Western Passover right now. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. And it's a, about a five week or so difference in this particular season. We checked over some of the older calendars and compared the West and the East or the or the um Ethiopian from from the the, the Roman this would be the Roman the, or under the Roman in Rome, because we're under the Roman one of the Roman uh, system of things, the Pax Romana, many Christians will say, well, I'm not Roman Catholic, but then most of their customs and traditions, even the time and, and the images and all of that is basically from the most likely the Protestants, and the Protestants will be considered scripturally the daughters of, um, the daughters of Babylon. Even the Pope said that basically all the, Western Gentile Christian church in the world that that Rome is the mother church right now we know that that mother and the mystery of that particular mother all right but let's just touch on this the real significance the real spiritual significance of the unleavened bread and this is a comparison right there so it's not the white bread right that that's very key and here um, is is the baking of this you know the baking of the bread here is the application, right, of the blood to the doorpost, right, so we can understand the meaning for the season. From the European Jews, this is a basic uh, Passover, like the Seder or the plate, right, the meal, how, how it's organized right there, right. So just to get a basic idea, I'm going to keep this picture right here, and then, and then we have the bread and the wine, the bread and the wine, and it's significant to understand this bread and the wine, and the connection with that, and what is known as the Last Supper. So here we see the broken flesh, right? The broken flesh. And if you look at, um, if you read uh, Isaiah, I think it's 53, right? Isaiah 53, in order to really understand um, the meaning, right, as well as the color of the cross right so these beginning today for the next seven days of or beginning today for the next six days one can say would be but in total seven days would be the feast of unleavened bread now there's a spiritual meaning right there's a spiritual meaning let's touch on this where where the scripture speaks of christ Christ is our Passover. For those who are in the New Covenant, then Christos, our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is our Passover. So you can see, looking up Christ and Passover. So let's uh, go forward. We're using the Blue Letter Bible right here. right? And brothers and sisters, your prayers, your support, it, it helps us. right? It helps us greatly to get God's Word. Right, to the lost sheep and to all who are coming out of Babylon, all in the world who will receive salvation. So here we are going to the next quote, right, that I want to share with you so that we can better understand this and as well as the meaning, right, the meaning of the unleavened bread, as well as the broken flesh of Christ, right, and the broken flesh of the black man. And what they did, as it says in the scripture, because they hated Yeshua, because they hated our black Lord and Savior, so they have hated us. And, and it's clearly demonstrated. This here is Simon um, Ushakov's Last Supper from actually, it was 1685. I think I said 1658, actually 1685. And you can see the Hebrews. Hebrews are Afro-Shemitic language. And you can see the imagery of the original Hebrews with their afros, 
right? And Yeshua here in the set in the center, the cup and the bread right here, right? Within the new covenant in the new covenant fulfillment, right? In the new covenant. So we have the old covenant coming out of Egypt, right? And then we have the new covenant which we liken to a spiritual Egypt, right? And coming out of this so called matrix, right? Coming out of this Babylon. Coming out of Babylon. Now Let's go to this verse right here, and this is a significant verse right here. Let's send to this right here. Christ and Passover. Take a note of this right here as far as concerning the bread. It says, purge out therefore, right, to purge out. See, the Israelites in building up to Passover and preparing for Passover would clean out all um, leaven, right, would clean out everything that is leaven out of the house. Leaven is like the yeast, Right, purge out all of the leaven. Right, so when we look at the bread, right, when we look at the bread again, right, so basically everything like this, like the white bread, all of that would be purged out. And this is the bread, this is the flat bread, right, this is the flat bread, right, the kita, as it's called in the Amarinya, right. Um, so none of this, the white bread, right, you know, that which has yeast and that which is puffed up in a, in a sense. So, what, so when we understand this spiritually, this is purging out. I mean, but this is really a deep, um, not just deep, but it, it, it's, it's a very wonderful analogy or metaphor that teaches us so much, so much about even the real world that we are in. Right, the real world, even with white supremacy and and the whole changing of the image, the whole deception, you know. Because if you look at the bread, even right, as we utilize this comparison right here, when we take this comparison right here of the broken flesh, right, to use this as an example of the broken flesh. Of Christ, right? The broken flesh of Christ. I don't know if you can see this very well, right? The broken flesh of Christ. So this is one reason why we and many others say that black people, right? Black people, they have the wrong, right, cross hanging not just on their walls, but almost as a firewall. That is. so it's breaking down that middle wall, that wall in their mind for. Re in order to understand and receive the true meaning, right, as well as the true color of the cross. So we have this unleavened bread. So in the Old Testament sense, they would purge out all the physical leaven, which according to the type or the anti-type, the forerunner type, is correct, right? But now in the New Testament sense, what is that leaven? Is it just the physical bread? Right, taking it to the higher height and getting into the real spirituality. So you see this comparison right here. I want you to really understand that this is what the Bible is talking about. I think in Isaiah chapter 53, where it speaks of how Yeshua, how he was bruised, you know, for our iniquities. Right? And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Right? So here we go to this scripture right here and in the New Testament this is what we say it's not about rites or rituals it's essentially a function of the heart therefore we're saying that yes the Old Testament is the foundation but as we go at, to higher heights as Rastafari say as we go to a more spiritual more metaphysical as we get into the liberty as we begin to live it you know, saying getting beyond just the religio the religion sense and get into true liberty, into true spirituality, so we come into the true promised land. It says, purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye, you, know, you all, we all may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. We are to be unleavened for even Christos or Christ, Moshiach, our Passover, our Pesach, our Fasica, is sacrificed for us. So our Passover, Moshiach, Yeshua, right? Here is Christ at the Passover, right? Here's the imagery, a more correct and accurate Ethiopian Hebrew imagery of the Last Supper, 
right, from one of the, I think, Russian um, Orthodox paintings. And then here we have, right, Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. So this is the first part. We'll get into another part of this and go a little bit deeper on these 11, these 11 days, the real meaning of the unleavened days. All right? So Shalom Rastafari.